Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel. We're going to be talking about binge, binge-worthy. Talking about maybe... Possibility, Bravo, True Entertainment, maybe uh, showing candy the door. Okay, now we know we've heard it once before and always, you know, twice around the rainbow and again and again and again. <coughs> them getting rid of candy, cause candy, I'm telling you, she all about that bag, and she ain't finna leave nothing that lucrative unless she's forced to leave. Okay. This is common sense. And she already said it. She don't, she don't ever plan on leaving Bravo. But if Bravo decided they don't need her services anymore, she would go quietly into the night. Because <laughs> we know <clears throat> she has definitely capitalized on Revenue Stream Ventures and reinventing herself. And definitely putting herself in the back where she is, is being seen as a producer. And y'all know this whole season was really about candy and her making money moves, her her being in um what you call it, stage plays or being behind the scenes doing production and probably some of the writing in these um plays, especially the ones she got coming up with Samuel Jackson. Now, we all know he ain't no B list actor. Well he might be a B plus slash A minus actor, but he's still out there trying to do the darn thing. And he has made his mark in the film industry as well as uh movies and television broadcasting okay so we can see for those who can see and eyes to hear that the writing is on the wall but i think it would be a mutual agreement not necessarily on candace part because she can ride anything as long as it's providing her with the money she can ride she'll ride to it just go into extinction okay and she has definitely proved that to us even though a lot of people a lot of her fans her fanatics be like candy uh don't don't need bravo candy don't need to you know be aligning herself with them she has money she's been making money yeah but guess what the damn current uh, revenue stream she gets from Bravo helps her continue to do the things that she likes to invest in. Okay, I'm just keeping it real. Now, we had put on the way burner side uh, about the peach being passed to uh, Jeannie Mai. Now, you know Jeannie Mai is here in Atlanta now. Don't get it twisted. She also have a home, I think, in Los Angeles. I'm, 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 I'm not quite sure. But, yeah. Okay. And the three musketeers have definitely broke up. Kenya don't have Cynthia coming out. Come, Kenya does not have Cynthia's name coming out her mouth. They have definitely put uh, Phaedra on the Real Housewives of Dubai. So they are really interested in bringing Phaedra back to the mainstream, which is Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay, get it, got it good. But they can't do it because Candy's there. And Candy feels some kind of way that they let Phaedra put that lie out via Carlos King on the show. And it could have cost her plenty. Her brand, all the business deals she had uh, connected with and trying to make them be, uh, in free, well, trying to make them be a... We're trying to bring it into fruition, trying to manifest it to where she is also living those dreams that she wanted. And she was making money on uh, her top money, top money maker show, Real Housewives of Atlanta. And that was in jeopardy because who's going to want to mess with her if she got that labeled and um, prosecuted for trying to rape somebody or drug them and, you know, take advantage of that person. No, with no network, with no body use candy as anything anymore she was just been a has-been and gone into the night in a sense broke as hell all right but 
that was another here nor there what i was trying to say you know there's no storyline really we've all been saying that with uh about candy when it comes to the real housewives of atlanta we don't watch riley grow up we don't watch candy get married we don't watch riley go to college we don't saw candy uh take her money from real housewives of atlanta and explore and put it out in the community of money making businesses and she's giving back to you know uh the masses you know she got her care candy caroline uh where she takes care of people in the neighborhoods uh far as giving back to the giving back to the community when it comes to uh charitable services like you know she helps the people around thanksgiving and christmas she helps the children go back to school making sure they got their uh supplies to be able to start a good year off on the right foot and you know she's a good philanthropy person and she has something going on with piedmont hospital where she's uh being our more so like an ambassador of goodwill to the community as well as helping piedmont get the word out there on her platform about certain illnesses or things they're doing for the community as well so she's definitely being a positive role model out there you can't take that away from her she's definitely sub cemented herself solidify herself within the community uh far as helping out and providing jobs okay for minorities uh and like i said she's been definitely interviewing she got her speak on platform going so it can help her um or show people when she wants to be having her own talk show maybe in the near future or whatever she's she's done her homework she's done her leg work she has produced very good numbers when it comes on her speak on it segment where she's interviewing people uh and especially uh in a uh interviewing people that are in the entertainment industry so that gave her a one up maybe somebody had gave her some solid advice you know you might need to get you a platform where you're interviewing people you're you're bringing in the heavy hitters and you're letting us know what they got going on what they're doing now and things of that nature you see what i'm saying i know she had one at uh something that i think uh kiki palmer had beat her out of hosting a, a, a big I want to say big, but they were very known out there. Strandhand and some he had a um, Michael Strandhand and Kelly, I think they had like a talk show host uh, for celebrities in a sense. Um, that one of them needed some time off, and Kiki Palmer was already there mentoring on the show, and I guess she was going up against Candy, and of course we had already got familiar or familiarized with Kiki Palmer and Michael Strandhand. I think her name is Kelly uh their daytime morning show and you know when you got candy coming in and she somewhat clicks with the group but not necessarily you will give it to the person that really has the most chemistry with the two that are already there you see i think michael was trying to go somewhere it was either kelly having her baby or michael was doing something but she was filling in and doing a hell of a good job and uh I, you know she beat candy out for that opportunity now i'm speculating i'm just you know looking in here and looking in here and then make my own decision on what i feel is real so she's done definitely done a good job with speak on it uh even though she's been really um what you call it having people on the show that she's really close to you know like some of the girls on real housewives of atlanta then you got her when she had the log cast when she brought uh the old lady game uh platform to her platform and she was interviewing the guests that actually appeared on the show so you know it, it can go either way you just need to have your name out there and they need to see that you're serious about being a talk show hostess or something to that effect okay but um i i, I don't told y'all can't it's time candy's time has come uh upon us they don't want to pay Candy that high ass salary, and she really not doing anything to how we say work for the pay. And we see how Marlo pushed some buttons here and there when it came to her. Sheree was even coming in trying to put uh, her neck on Candy's throat, and Candy was fighting them all off, honey. She was fighting them all off, and honey, when she went and said, "Honey," she said, "Bitch, I'm worldwide," and then dropped some accessories a couple of days after. where well, you can buy that word that she has definitely profited off of. <laughs> that bitch, I'm worldwide type of situation. Yeah, it's gonna be something like uh, Nene Bloop and all these other one. 
uh, saying phrases, and it'll, it'll die down after a while. But, you know, just like we'll never forget when Sheree said, who gonna check me, boo? And instead of her doing something with that line, she, she, she just crazy as hell. I, I don't know what to say about Sheree. And so I won't really say anything. We'll just move on to what we really were coming to talk to or about in this particular video. Now, we got to thank Diane again. She's doing her due diligence and, and giving me stories because I can't keep up with everything <clears throat> and work a full-time job and take care of family. So I need some help when people want me to talk about something. Get out in them comments. Tell me. And when I find the time to bring it out, you know, I will shout you all out for giving me the peace to talk about. Okay, because I don't know half the time what to be talking about. If it ain't coming across my feed normally, I won't have commentary because I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not that kind of person now. Like I said, I got a job. I got things going on. And I just have little time to do what I do enjoy doing, which is talking with my family on YouTube. Okay. But, you know, when I get retired, with like about nine years now, I'm telling y'all, <coughs> I'm going to have Super Chat. I'm going to have everything that allows you all to help me out while I continue to talk and, and uh, give y'all hints of drama out there in them streets. Because, you know, when you get seasoned and you get retired, there's not too much more you can do. Because it's like you have to design your own day or what you're going to have, what you're going to be doing and, and being taken a part of. Okay. But when you have something in an environment that you have to work for someone or for yourself, you always have things to do. It's never a dull moment with each given day. But when you're retired, you know, you don't. only thing you have to put in perspective is when I'm going to the doctor. <laughs> when I'm going grocery shopping. If I feel like I want to go grocery shopping. Because, you know, once you get retired, you eat less and you talk more, I guess, you know. And then it's charity work. That can be done out there as well. So we have senior citizens. We have a lot, but we have a lot more time on our hands than what we used to have when we were out there working. So, you know, YouTube is going to be my main deal. Uh, if it's still around, if we're still around, you know what I'm saying? Because we just don't know how the world is going. We, we could be gone the next day. Because look at the presidency we got up there. And the presidency we had uh, got rid of, you know. But it just is what it is. We ain't going to talk about Trump. No, we're really not going to. But he, Because he dis disappointed some people in his own race, okay? But it just is what it is. <clears throat> but we're going to go into what Binge Worthy uh, brought out on his platform. If I can find it, Lord. Y'all know I'm challenged with this YouTube and Instagram and all, the, all things of that nature. Let's see. Where am I going with this? Where is the info, people? Lord, I'm so challenged. I'm so challenged, y'all. So, pay. Give me, give me some space. Give me some space to make some errors until I find what I'm looking for. I might have to go in my daughter. <laughs> might have to go find my daughter and tell her where I get that shit from, guys. Where did I get it from? Um, <clears throat> no, it wasn't in there. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Let's see. Let me see. Ooh. Oh, well. Nope, that's not the one. Well, hell, just oh, look at the pictures until I get it. Okay? Get it, got it good. Do that for me. Mm, 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 mm. I just went through there. I don't think it... Well, maybe it was here. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm back, y'all. I am back. She showed me what it was, but like I said, it was um, <coughs> it was titled "This Is So Bad." And the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Then Binge Worthy is uh, a blogger, uh, um, YouTuber, and he comes out. You know, he's a little uh, emanated man that be talking, but uh, it's on his show, uh, Binge Worthy, B I N G E Worthy. You go over there, you can get the full visual he gives you 
uh, about whatever particular story he's talking about. But here we go. Has remained a full-time cast member of The Real Housewives of Atlanta since she made her reality television debut on the second season of the show. That means she has been sharing her life with us for 13 out of the 14 years that the show has been on the air. Pretty good as far as housewife history goes, because normally they get cut. Is that a ooh, or am I just stating a fact? And now, after all this time, it's starting to look like some fans of the show, and maybe even some of the people at the network, have had enough. Wow, Candy, good night. This is your last season, sorry. Oh! I don't know if she did enough this season. Okay, Casey! <laughs> Candy, good night. This is your last season. Sorry. Kind of sound like Cynthia uh, Bailey talking on it, guys. But it wasn't. It's just San Diego back with another binge ready video. And I've been minding my business watching new episodes of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 14. So when this tea came across my desk, I initially rejected covering the story out of respect for Candy until I actually listened to the full podcast. So today, let's talk about how I've been noticing the writings on the wall that suggest that Bravo might be looking to move forward with The Real Housewives of Atlanta without Candy Burris. And why I finally decided to speak on it. Y'all already know the truth. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, slam that bell button, and follow Bingeworthy on Instagram and the TikTok. Okay, if you've been watching new episodes of The Real Housewives of Atlanta season 14, you know that the vibes are really different. After losing a couple of key players over the years, we were only left with Kenya Moore and Candy Burris this year to carry on the show. And while each of the ladies have been holding it down, by now, we all know that we can look forward to the reunion at the end of the season to really figure out who the network has found to be the show's heavy hitters. Yes, I'm talking about the reunion seating chart this year. And that's where things get really interesting. The other day, former RHOA super producer Carlos King had the girls shook when he and his guest, Kate Casey, started spilling the tea about the seating chart for this season's reunion that was filmed in New York City. So here's the exclusive news that allegedly has taken place. Teray is sitting next to Andy, and so is Marlo. Huh. Allegedly, next to Marlo is Drew and Sonya. Oh, okay. And next to Sheree is Kenya and Candy. Wow, Candy, good night. This is your last season, sorry. Oh! I don't know if she did enough this season. Okay, Casey! I mean, if you're at the end of the couch and you've been on for many, many seasons, that's probably a sign that they want to switch the show up. Uh, this was too much for me, but I at least wanted to at least hear them out. <laughs> at least, at least wanted to. I at least wanted to hear them out because I wanted to. I wanted the tea. <laughs> Listen, it, it's no disrespect to the individual cast member, but there comes a point where I think the audience and the producers and the network have say to themselves, the story has been told. Now listen, Team Candy, in order for us to be able to talk about this, we really got to be mature. We really got to get our feelings, you know, <laughs> in check. And we really got to talk about this kind of like commentators do it sports. Like when they do it, it's really no disrespect and there's no disrespect here. So with that being said, as I mentioned earlier, we have watched Candy for 13 years and we've seen a lot. We need to give space for someone else to switch it up. After that, they went on to have discussions about how Candy should naturally be in her worldwide era and how she should already be looking to move on to her next chapter without the show. Do y'all remember when it used to be a big deal when our girls started getting invited to have a seat at the table on Broadway, Dancing with the Stars, and all of those other huge opportunities that were usually reserved for Hollywood's elite? And now, thanks to people like Candy, 
our girls are the motherfucking table, bitch. Black women. And I also think she should be at a point, if I'm her agent, I'm like, I think that we've done enough here, right? And there's so many opportunities that she can get beyond the show and deserves to have beyond the show. I think that there's a point where you gotta close the chapter. Things got really interesting when Carlos actually chimed in himself. I never looked at it that way, but I have to say you may be onto something. And it was nice to hear him give Candy her props. Unlike Marlo, I don't think Candy is only Atlanta. I do think she's worldwide. He also feels like Candy should make this her last season on Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I never thought I would say this, Kate. I agree with you that this should be Candy's last season. And I really do feel like he and Kate were actually explaining themselves really well. Only because I think there's so much more for Candy to do that I don't think Candy is going to be able to truly do as long as she's on this show. Ciao. Be sure to check out full episodes of the Reality with the King podcast because the conversations are so binge worthy. My God. What's Thunderstruck on Carnival? What's Thunderstruck? Okay, now. I really don't care what Carlos King says about Candy because we know he's suspect. All right, with the whole Porsche and Phaedra and the whole dragon scene. But, I, you know, I've always said, shit, Candy's really showing us what she can do. Okay, and what she really loves to do, and that's producing, that's writing, that's being behind the scenes here and there. But, you know, like I said, Candy just had to have a leap of faith and jump on into that new role that's definitely waiting for her to grow in, mature in, and develop in, which is the acting field, the producing, all the stuff that gets you paid much, much more money than being, you know, being uh, casted on the show to play a role. Now, uh, I can't say, you know, anybody else other than Carly King giving us commentary on Candy Should Be Leaving would be paramount. Other than, you know, him just by himself saying it, I give no uh, two shit shits about. Because he really did, really did it wrong. But let's go back to Binge Worthy. With Carlos in saying that it's time for Candy to bow out gracefully. And the other half are explaining exactly why Candy needs to stay. With one housewife fan chiming in saying, This was a nice Wednesday Bible study moment. I think that we all need an exclamation point. You have to know when to move on. And Lisa was feeling some type of way responding. I do believe Candy should leave. Candy's storyline is boring, no shade towards her. But her time has gone by. Since she says from her mouth, I'm worldwide, then why sit on a show where in most cases, Candy is eating food, rolling her eyes, and everything. Candy is there for the money, and that is completely understandable. But move like you're worldwide then, Candy. With one fan coming to the Housewife Stars' defense, saying, Candy don't need to go nowhere. Y'all always want people to move on. Candy been on tour, Broadway, TV shows, etc., etc. She's proof that it could all be done, exclamation point. So we want her to keep doing what she's been doing, exclamation point. It's working, exclamation point, with another Candy fan responding. If it's not broke, don't fix it, dot, dot, dot. I think RHOA personally needs Candy. She's the only piece of that real ATL consistently on the show, honestly. She keeps us engaged and inspired with her many business ventures, for sure. Before one fan got petty talking about, Kitty's time been up. I say Andy calls her bluff and brings Phaedra back with her hands thrown up in the air. I don't know who needed to hear this, but this is your sign that God ain't told you to tell nobody to do shit. Here are my final thoughts. The Real Housewives of Atlanta is definitely in their reset era. And they are really, really trying to figure out how to usher the show into the future. I feel like the writing's on the wall. We've seen them move forward without Nini, Phaedra, and now Cynthia Bailey and Portia Williams. And it honestly would not surprise me if they kept that same energy for Candy. And of course, I have no way of knowing for sure. I never really claim to like have concrete information about casting because I just don't think it's cool to lie to like the people who trust you with information. But 
I have been pretty accurate at predicting what I think they're going to do with casting decisions for future seasons. Just think about that. Just think about that for a minute. I knew when they were getting tired of Nene Leakes, and I called it. I knew when they didn't want to even cover Cynthia's wedding that they were over her too, and I called it. I also read Portia's cryptic messages and saw how the network tried to play her on her own spinoff, and I called it. Now, with some of the other things that I peeped this season, and with the alleged seating chart for the reunion, I really, really want to call it, but... I'm at least wait until we see how this reunion plays out. Now, I don't know exactly what Carlos's intentions were with this podcast episode, but he insists that he is not trying to be shady here and that he's coming from a place of love and respect for Candy. I really want my audience to not take this as a shady soundbite, but to really look at it as a deeper meeting in terms of when to hold, when to fold, and when it's time to buy off gracefully because there's other opportunities your way. But context is always important here, so I do want to point out that it hasn't even been all that long since Carlos had Marlo on this podcast throwing shade at Candy just a few months ago while he just sat back mumbling and cackling. Candy, do some shit for the black culture. We got enough babies and diseases out here. We don't need no <laughs> stuff about sex, Candy. So one of your classmates, Marlo, seems to think that you should be doing more for the culture. She be so fake to me. You done fuck, you fucked out in Atlanta, okay? She gets on my motherfucking nerves. Where's the lie? Where is the lie? I'm tired of her bullshit. Whatever I'm saying, point out the lie and then call me a liar. She's fake as fuck. But bitch, I stay back. She want to get over here and show her motherfucking ass. She's getting on my nerves. You just sound stupid, okay? <laughs> and Candy made it pretty clear that she and Carlos are definitely not in a good place. Where is you and Todd's relationship like with Carlos King? There is no relationship, child. We don't have a relationship no more. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Comment right now and tell me what you guys think about all this. Do you think that Carlos King was throwing shade at Candy on his podcast? And be sure to let me know your thoughts about whether or not it's time for Candy to leave the show. And that was it, guys, on that particular topic. What do y'all think? I know you're gonna have <clears throat> what I say. I know you're gonna have Candy stands and uh stances saying ah she don't need to go don't watch it well sometimes it ain't gonna be what you think that person should do it's gonna be up to the producers to say look we've done all we can we know you definitely have invested your money well how do you want to play your exit do you want us to go on and get rid of you in the public or are you going to tell your public uh supporters what's going on you know we're gonna let you tell that story so I'm like Ben worth than everybody else. Candy time has really come. And Kenya's time is going to come. And I, I've been seeing Kenya move, honey. She's been uh, hanging out and being with other network uh, people. You know, it's still in the Bravo family. But, I mean, she's been sitting there, you know, getting with Teresa Gudis. Well, don't, it ain't Gudis now. I don't forgot what the last name is because she just got married. And she's been with... Um, what do you call it? Giselle Bryant hanging down there with Ashley Darby. And, of course, um, what name? Robin Dixon. And Robin Dixon is just the epitome of Cynthia Baylor that was on The Housewives. She don't have a storyline either. And her husband, to me, he seemed like he gay. And I know y'all think I use that word a lot when describing down on men. But I really do. I've always thought he was, you know. Just me, just me, just me, honey. But y'all get down there and y'all make y'all uh, assumptions. Y'all tell me what y'all feel about was I right when I'm saying Robin Dixon's husband, you know, allegedly is fruity. Or was I right when I said can birds need to be going on. Stop being scared. And, 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 and. Take that leap of faith and go and get that money. I mean, because she's, you know, Samuel L. Jackson ain't no, you know, has-been actor. Hell, he'd be doing commercials and everything else to stay 
uh, afloat in the entertainment business. And he could definitely steer her into some projects. I mean, can it be work? I mean, who was the other person she worked with? Um, uh, Cheryl Lee Ralph. Uh, that used to be the mother of uh, stepmom of Moesha. Y'all know her. Uh, I think she's Haitian. I can't remember, but. Candy has definitely been around a lot of heavy hitters that they can definitely open doors for her. And if she's definitely being illuminated, <laughs> them doors are already done creeped open waiting for her to come in and do work for them. Okay, I'm just saying, I'm just saying for the people that understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so I wouldn't be surprised that uh, she don't be on season 15 because she definitely has run her race. I'm telling you, you got to stop being complacent. And that's even for professional people, as well as everyday people working in hard laboring jobs. If you see yourself doing something uh, better than what you're doing now, take it, okay? Don't wait until the Lord just come in and just take you out the situation. See what I'm saying? Because you're going to be feeling some kind of way. But in the, on the, uh, the end point or the, in the hindsight, you, would go, you could really say that, oh, okay, I didn't take myself out of that situation, so I was forced out of that situation, and I'm glad I'm no longer in that situation. I know everybody done been there. Hell, I've been there, you know what I'm saying? And I always say, well, thank you, Lord. You know I wasn't going out the door unless you pushed me out that door. But it's all about having that faith. And like I said, I never really hear her talk about the Lord or anything of that nature. I don't know if she just don't say it, but she believes in it or what's really going on, you know what I'm saying? Because black people have always, in historical times, always leaned to uh, our Savior, our Creator, to get us through whatever situation we're going through. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, you know, you have people that are atheists. You have people that don't believe the same thing that I do. And I respect that. I respect that. Um, get it how you fit it. You know what I'm saying? Get it how you fit it. Okay? But y'all tell me what y'all thought about this um, news I just brought to you all. Get out in them comments and say what you feel, okay? And just really think about it now. And then compare her situation with your situation. If you would put it in the same arena Candy has been in for a while. And she start having these bursts of opportunities come her way. She's not doing herself no justice, y'all. Because, you know, like, hey, she just got a spinoff uh, with the SWV uh, or uh, documentary they supposed to be doing with... Uh, that group as well as her group escape then she got the olg thing going on where she don't have to be in it per se but she got people you know in in the mix to make it work but she's producing on the other end you see what i'm saying that's power that's solidifying yourself for other big projects with other big networks that you can definitely uh cater to yeah, look at them i gotta do a story on mariah hug she don't build her social media um spot out in the mcdonald georgia you know i know of course she got that bravo money you know what i'm saying you know it don't hurt to have money and resources in your back pocket at your disposable uh when you don't want to take on another task but yeah it's time for candy to go i don't care what nobody say y'all fuss with me all that all the time but because i really don't think what real housewives of Atlanta are gonna be here you know, like 20 more years down the road. You know what I'm saying? Just like the Wendy Williams show had its uh, induction and its uh, demise. Same thing going to be with these Real Housewives of Atlanta, Potomac, Beverly Hill. It, you know, because they want mess. Trust and believe. They just want mess. And if you don't elevate it yourself to not being a part of that mess, it's hard to go in every day or every six months and work in a position that way. So, Get down in the comments and I will see y'all on the next video. And don't forget, because some of my membership went down. And I know it's Facebook. I mean, not Facebook, but YouTube. They're always messing with content creators. So if you didn't find yourself, um, what do you call it? You didn't find yourself still subscribed to me, check it out for me. And if you ain't, you for some reason, subscribe back. Subscribe back. How do y'all think I'm going to grow over him? If y'all don't help me with that situation. I'm coming with content. I'm coming with comedian type laughs here, ha ha, and everywhere. So help me out, guys. Help me out. Subscribe, like my video. Subscribe, like my video. And if you want to go a step further, hey, share my video out on your platform. It ain't going to hurt you. It ain't going to hurt you at all. 
Okay, and if you're really my family members, you'll be trying to help me out. Okay, okay, that's all I'm saying. Ain't gonna say no more. Well, you know I'm lying. I'm gonna be on the next video begging y'all too. But it just is what it is, okay? But I will see y'all next video. Thank you and good night.